Hey guys, Starlink baby. Let's do this one. I'm going to open up this Starlink. I'm going to set it up here. I had some internet connections before. It's fiber, but they always go like disconnected because of the area, I believe, or the internet service provider sucks. So yeah, I want to show you my location here. Very cloudy. It's been raining. Actually, uh, the storm, I mean, the typhoon kind of uh, lower down a bit, but it's still strong winds. Going back here, guys. I'm going to open up the Starlink, baby. Starlink, baby. What's inside? <laughs> okay. Nice deal. Are these the ones deals in SpaceX? Ha! <laughs> I think so. Ta-da! Okay. We have this tough cable, you know. This is the... Put it there first. Whoa, we have a very cool router here, you know. Yeah, nice one. So this, everything we have here, should be easy to set up. So let's try. Oh, that's it. Oh, there's the cable. We'll bring it inside. It has been four days. We didn't have electricity because of the typhoon and I was trying to set up this Starlink yesterday, but it is the wind is so strong and the, it's pouring rain, so I stopped and then early this morning, I went up and hooked the Starlink up there. And yeah, since we don't have electricity, I'm using this power station of Jackery. It's good enough to power up the um, um, Starlink Wi-Fi router in the dish, so I have the internet connection right now. And hopefully it can hold it up to at least four hours, and then I can charge it again in the car or uh, somewhere else on the other places that have current right now. So uh, we're hoping that the electricity is going to come back and hopefully power everything up. So it's pretty dark here. It's very cloudy outside. And yes, I have internet connection. Yeah, let's try to see this one. Start link, there you go. I'm online, then speed test. Hula. There you go, I don't know if you can see this one guys, but that is how much? 180! Cool! 188 guys, 188. Yeah, let's talk about Starlink, right? So I had it set up at my house. I need to come here in the office to continue the recording because we do not have electricity or current yet for four, five, maybe five, I don't know. So Starlink, yeah. Why did I buy a Starlink? So I want to answer that question before moving on. So I have this fiber connection and you, if you have seen it on my previous videos, I have like 400 megabits per second, which is really cool. But the problem is every time the internet service provider has a network issue, it would take them a minimum of five days to recover and fix the issue. And it happened to me twice already in a month. So I didn't like that because I need the internet to do something, a lot of things in the internet. So what I did is pick up the phone, call them, come on, just remove the cable from my house and I'm going to buy Starlink. Starlink arrived in five days. But by the time it arrived, it's typhoon. So I wasn't able to set it up until the typhoon kind of toned it down and I was able to climb up the roof and fix it temporarily actually because I need to really fix that one. If you don't like uh, waiting for network restoration from your service provider like me probably go for Starlink okay because the Starlink is has very good use cases like if you're in high mountains you travel a lot uh, the the fiber connection or internet service provider in your area cannot reach your house go for Starlink so very good because you can directly connect to the uh, connect to the stars. So for me, it feels like I'm connected to the stars, right? So you connect to the satellites of Elon and all these kinds of things, and you have this high-speed internet connection. Problem solved. So maybe when it comes to stability, I can say that the Starlink is way better than fiber connections, especially depending on your country or your region, because for us, it always goes down and it takes a very long time to restore the network. And um, 
if the cable is broken, somebody needs to go ahead and kind of fix it again. So that's the number one problem that I was solving. Now, mind you, because Starlink is expensive. It doubled the price of a fiber subscription in terms of speed, like 200 megabits is like the, the, the price I was paying for fiber before was 50% lesser than Starlink right now. And of course, another one you need to think is you need to pay for a one-time fee for the device of Starlink. So yeah, you, you know what I mean, it's pricey. And then um, uh, the thing is um, Starlink has a 12 month warranty. So you pray to the internet gods that uh, they are going to bless that Starlink device that you have there so that it's going to at least last for three years before it starts to deteriorate. Cables are going to, of course, those are materials and with rain, sun, uh, weather conditions, they are going to uh, deteriorate over time. So pray to the internet gods that it will last that long so that you don't need to buy again because Starlink only gives you 12 months of warranty on the device. So past 12 months, you know, if it, it gets broken probably, then uh-uh, you need to buy another one, okay? Okay, another one I didn't like with the Starlink was, come on, Elon, you make a Wi-Fi router, you're an internet service provider, you don't put or place in a Ethernet port, they need to create another adapter for it so that you're going to buy from them, come on. Why don't you just place it in the Wi-Fi router so that we can plug it and connect it to our home network and expand our network, right? So, mm -mm. so I bought one um, Ethernet adapter from Starlink. Elon, come on. So I hope they can fix that one. Uh, anyway, there is a, I think one month free because I just installed that one a couple of days ago. So there's one month free of subscription, right? So all in all, I like the device, but it's a little bit mm -mm, pricey for a regular user. Uh, but anyway, it can solve a lot of problems. If, if you don't like those kinds of problems that I said, like you don't like a long waiting time of restoration, and then the internet uh, provider cannot reach your area, you go to the mountains and you want to have internet, well, here's a solution, Starlink. So that's what you're paying for, right? In terms of the latency, uh, of course, Starlink is much slower. Uh, even though you have the bandwidth of 180 plus or let's say 200 megabits per second, because I hear from other people that I know that got the Starlink, they have 300 megabits per second. If the sky is clear, no rains probably. For me, when I install it, there are rains and clouds so, or fog. So maybe those are one of the cases of that. So hoping that it goes uh, midday, it go full blown 300, maybe 400 megabits, probably, I don't know. Um, but one thing you need to uh, know is that Starlink latency is way lower, um, higher, latency higher than um, Fiber because fiber around seven milliseconds up to you can go as five milliseconds going to ten milliseconds. That's the the speed of each of those uh, packets going to your router or the data that flows from the internet ser service provider going to your home router or your computer or your phones. For Starlink, it's uh, what I have seen when I did the test was around forty milliseconds. Oh, that's a very big difference. Anyways, I'm going to give you more updates because I ordered the adapter from uh, Starlink. At the same time, I wasn't able to show you more of the Starlink thingies in my home network because there's no power. So I just connected the Starlink in the dish and then I had a Wi-Fi, right? So until next time, guys, if you have any comments or questions, don't forget to just, just drop a comment down below. And if, you have, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure to... Um, you know, smash the subscribe button, like that, uh, press that like button because it really helps in the algorithm. Until next time.